everyone. I am so incredibly excited that you all have decided to grace us with your presence for this Hiring Hacks interview prep phone call Zoom situation. I am your host, Brittany Knowles. And I'm just gonna do a few housekeeping things for you, all right? Today, you're gonna hear from two subject matter experts in the recruitment space who will share best practices to help prepare you for your next interview and secure your next role. So just a few things, you'll notice that closed captioning is enabled. If you'd like to turn them on, you can do so by clicking on the more button on the bottom right of your screen, so bottom right, and it'll show captions for you, all right? Next thing that we wanna ask you to do, this is super important. I think probably more important than anything else that I have said thus far. That is, we would love for you to interact with us. This is absolutely an opportunity for you to be able to get behind the scenes, real insight on what is needed for you to secure the role that you are interested in. We are here to support you. So make sure that you are utilizing that chat feature, all right? We want your Twitter fingers going. So we're gonna stay on the line for 30 minutes after the presentation to answer any questions that you may have. Before I pass it over to the recruiters, I know that I've told you who I am, but let me tell you what I look like. Uh, one of the things that's super important to us is that we are always being um, inclusive, and that we are making sure that all of the presentations and conversations that we have are accessible. So with that being said, I'm gonna give you all my descriptive um, description. I am an African-American black female, mid thirties. I am wearing a black and white shirt because I wanted to match the wonderful panelists that we're gonna be uh, having speak very shortly. I wear glasses. Um, and I look forward to us being able to converse over in that chat section, all right? Before I pass it to the recruiters, I just want to give you an opportunity to learn a little bit more about our background. We are a talent solution company that focuses on the intersectionality of diversity. Our mission is to connect underserved and underrepresented talent to inclusive employers. We have over 150,000 jobs on our job board with inclusive employers who are looking for talent just like you. If you're looking for resources to help you in your job search and haven't already seen our website, I encourage you to browse through our job board. And the last thing you'll see at the bottom left corner of your screen, bottom left, our QR code for you to sign up for our virtual career fair, which is happening, not this week, next week, Wednesday, from 12 to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We will also have the QR code along with our additional information about our virtual career fair at the end of the, question, uh, the presentation. We have the chat open for any questions, any comments, any concerns throughout, and I'm gonna be popping in here and there just to be able to um, showcase some of your answers. So be looking for me. And without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our amazing, esteemed panelists, none other than the Allie and Jolene. Thank you so much, Brittany. Um, like Brittany said, my name is Allie Herkent. I am the Community Partnership and Engagement Lead with Getting Hired. I am a 30-year-old white female. I'm wearing my hair down. It's long past my shoulders. I was born a natural brunette, but I do have some blonde highlights. I have brown eyes, and today I am wearing my glasses. I have a black sweater on. I have been working in the recruitment space for about eight years, and I'm excited to teach you some tricks to help get you hired. Hi everyone, sorry about that. I couldn't get my mute button uh, off of you. My name is Jolene Martin. I am the talent acquisition lead with Getting Hired. I have been in recruitment for about 24 years. Um, I am a white female. I have light brown hair with chunky copper and blonde highlights. Um, and I am we're also wearing a black shirt today. And I'm super excited to share recruiting tips with you and hopefully help you um, work through any nerves that you might have during an interview. And with that, I will turn it over to Allie. Thanks, Jolene. So if you are new to the job market, or maybe it's been a while since the last time you applied, let's go through the five steps 
of the process from application to offer. The first step is going to be resume refresh. So creation or recreation of your resume. You're going to want to refresh your resume at least one time per year to make sure that you're keeping it up to date and that you're always ready in case you see a job that you'd like to apply to. The next step is going to be the application. So what you'll want to do is once you've identified a position that you're interested in, the application process is typically online and you will walk through uploading and documenting your past experience in what we call an ATS or an applicant tracking system. This is where recruiters and hiring managers are able to review your application. The third step is the recruiter interview. So if you are selected, the typical next step is for a recruiter to either call, email, or text you to set up a time to discuss your background and the role in more detail. These conversations can be anywhere between 10 minutes to 45 minutes, depending on the role and the company's interview process. The fourth step is the hiring manager interview. So once you are pre-qualified by the recruiter, the next step is to meet with the hiring manager. Depending on the process, you can meet with one manager, or I'm sorry, one hiring manager or multiple hiring managers in a panel interview. And then the fifth and final step is the final decision. So after the team has completed their interviews with all the selected candidates, a decision is made. If you are selected, you will usually hear back from the recruiter versus the hiring manager who will walk you through the offer and the onboarding for your next role. I'd like to ask the audience a question before we move on to the resume portion of this uh, presentation. So just on average, how long do you believe that a recruiter looks at your resume before making a decision? And you can use the chat to answer this question. So do you believe a recruiter is looking at your resume for three minutes, 30 seconds, seven seconds, or one second? And Brittany, if you could read those answers out to me. I got you. I already see Heather is on it. Okay. She said one minute. Vashal said 15 seconds. Haley said 10 seconds. Uh, someone said 10 seconds, seven seconds. Someone said one minute, 30 seconds, 11, 30. I'm loving the participation. Let's go. Okay. Awesome. I think we can go to the next slide and review what the results are. Okay, so if you said anywhere close to 7.4 seconds, you are correct. Studies show that resumes are looked at on an average of 7.4 seconds before a recruiter makes a final decision to move forward and contact that uh, potential candidate. So let's go over some of the do's and don'ts of things that you either want to add to your resume or things that might not be necessary. So the first one is objectives are not necessary. Objectives are typically usually um, repetitive and they can be tedious when you must change from application to application. So instead of having something that you're gonna have to constantly change and tailor to each application that you're submitting, you'll want to put something on the top of your experience to highlight your accomplishments. This will be consistent for anywhere you apply and will give the recruiters more information about the summary of your work. The next, the next one is experience, education, and skills. So it's very important to put all relevant and recent experience at the top of your page, starting with your experience, then your education and your skills. The third one is two page resumes are okay. So traditionally you may have heard that it's important to, to fit everything on one page. If you have been in the job market for over 10 years, it's okay to have more than two or more than one page of your resume. The fourth one is consider adding some color to make your resume pop. So it's okay to add some color as long as it's consistent and highlights information that is relevant. So you'll see in one of our, my examples later on that name and contact info, job titles, or companies that you work for, et cetera. If you want to highlight, make that bold, add a little bit of color to those sections, that's totally fine. The next one is professional email address. Um, it's very important to have a professional email address. Email addresses are free. 
So if you have been using an email address that maybe isn't appropriate or professional, consider making a new one. Um, and that could be your email address just for the work, just for your work stuff or the applications that you're going to be submitting. The next one is punctuation and grammar. Punctuation and grammar are important in the formatting of your resume. As you update your resume, you want to make sure that any past experience bullet points are in the past tense and any current work is in the present tense. For example, if you have bullet points where you are using sentences, you also want to make sure that it's consistent. If every sentence has a period at the end, then you want to make sure that every bullet point is a full sentence with a period at the end. The next one is experience section is in chronological order. It's very important that your experience is in chronological order from newest at the top to your oldest experience at the bottom. This ensures that the recruiter and hiring manager are seeing what you're currently doing versus where you started in the beginning of your career. And lastly, do not add personal information. So you never have to add personal information such as your social security number, your birthday, your citizen status, your full address. Um, and when adding your location or your address to the resume, you can really keep it simple and just add the city and state where you're currently living. So what information should go under each, um, each position held? So when you're looking at your resume and you're deciding what you want to put under each bullet, um, think about the who the WHO format, what you did, how you did it, and the outcome. This will provide the value add you have brought to the companies you have worked for and what you have been able to learn and achieve. It is, a good, it is good to start every line with action, with an action verb to get you started. Think about your daily activities in your role and how you can break them up into individual line items. For example, here's, here are some that I like to use. Demonstrated leadership, leadership over 10 employees, trained all new staff, conducted inventory audits weekly, streamlined our automated reports and created spreadsheets for leadership, and so on and so forth. The best practice is for you to have a minimum of three bullet points, but you can usually add about four to five just to make sure you're adding all of the things that you did for that position. And you'll want to make sure you are giving well-rounded picture of what your responsibilities were and are. A resume's overall presentation is important. You want to make sure it's easily, easily readable and well thought out. Keep your resume consistent with whichever format you use. Example, if you underline your experience section, make sure you also underline education. If you choose to spell out January when putting the date, spell out all of the months um, versus going back and forth between shorthand and written out language. And this resume is a good example of some of the color pops that I mentioned on the earlier slide. You can see that we chose to do a dark blue. Um, that's a good color example because you don't want to do something too bright or that might be hard to read, but you can see it does make the resume pop nicely. The next thing that we're going to go over is LinkedIn. Um, so if anybody, if everybody wants to use their reaction and give me a thumbs up, if you are active on LinkedIn, um, or maybe give me a maybe a laughing face if you've never been on LinkedIn and you don't know how to use it. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of thumbs up. That's good. Um, we have some basic tips on how to attract and build your LinkedIn profile. Some of this you may have already done. I see a lot of thumbs up, so that's good. But I do want to highlight some of the important things that LinkedIn can do for you. So LinkedIn will allow you to connect and network. Um, there's a lot of benefits to having a LinkedIn and it's going to allow you to connect with recruiters and colleagues. It's a pro professional so social network. So it's important to keep in touch with anybody that you're talking to throughout your career. Um, and you can always reach out to them again in the future. The next one is you can directly apply for jobs. It is a free job board. So you can get alerts for new positions that fit your profile. You can also learn about different career fairs or free meetings, such as the one that you're at today. I know that some of you have learned about the hiring of PACS event through our LinkedIn marketing. So it's a really good place to hear about other hiring events that are happening um, within the industries that you're looking for. The third one is learn about the current market. You can learn about the current market and similar backgrounds and skills in the job market. 
You are able to see what companies are hiring and you are able to see what other people with similar job experience are doing and where their careers have taken them. This can inspire you to figure out what you wanna do next in your career. The next one is attract potential employers. You can attract potential employers in one place, um, not just a single company. Uh, and the next one is show your skills, project, interests, and certifications. So your profile on LinkedIn goes into a little bit more detail than a resume. You can show your skills, the projects you worked on, your interests, your certifications, and more. Um, and you can also learn about new certifications. So there's many free courses that can be found through LinkedIn. And a lot of them offer different badges that you can put on your profile um, and different things that can make you stand out. And then the last one is give and receive endorsements from colleagues. So you can give different recommendations and endorsements to either people that you've worked with in the past, but also your past colleagues can do that for you as well. So it's almost like giving a kudos for different skills that you have and shown while, while at work. And you are also able to request endorsements from others. But usually if you give someone an, an endorsement, they will give you one back as a trade-off. So if you are not familiar with how to set up your LinkedIn profile, here are some very quick ways that you can do that. Um, first, you go to linkedin.com. You can use your email address and password. You'll wanna make sure that your email address is professional because it will show on your profile um, and that it, you write it down somewhere so that you don't forget. In case you, um, in, it will ask you to add your location, um, just your city and state. And what this is going to, going to do is categorize who, who you will connect with and also show you what jobs are available in your area. It will also add you to add some interest. This is going to help filter out your feed and show you things that are important to you or stuff that interests you. Some examples are technology, healthcare, animal activis activism, and nonprofit organizations. And then to complete your setup, you will edit your profile so that you can add in your location, your certifications, any volunteer work you've done, all of your work experience. And then lastly, we'll be adding a picture. So whatever picture you choose is fine. Just make sure that it's professional looking. Lastly, if you are open to work, um, one of the most recent features that LinkedIn has is their hashtag hiring and hashtag open to work. The hashtag hiring you will see on recruiters and HR folks who are promoting their company's hiring initiatives. So if you see a hashtag hiring on somebody's profile, it's basically an invitation to connect with them. And then for those of us who are currently seeking a role, it's best to use the hashtag open to work hashtag. Um, this will help recruiters and hiring leaders find you very easily. Uh, once you are on the profile page, you will, you will click on open to, which I have pointed out on the, on the slide there. There you will find options, but you will want to click where it states finding a new job. There will be a few questions about what type of job you're looking for and the requirements and job preferences. Once you complete, click on the bottom, add to your profile, then you're all set. You will have the ability to, uh, to have companies reach out to you and know that you are interested in seeking new positions. And before we move on to interviews, um, you can pop in any questions in the chat um, about resume writing. And what we're gonna do is save all those questions for the end. Um, but feel free to add them before we pass over it, pass it over to Jolene. Thank you, Allie, so much. Hi, everyone. Okay, I am so excited to share this next section with you with, about interviewing um, and preparing for that very nerve wracking interview. Um, I will let you know ahead of time that I am very animated, so I do talk with my hands. So if you see hands, you know, I apologize, but I just want to let you know that, that that might come up from time to time. So let's talk about the interview process. So you are going to find a position that you're interested in online, um, apply to that role, and then wait and see what happens. So there are three different types of interviews that you can come across. There's a phone interview, a video, and an in-person interview. So we'll talk about the phone interview first. The phone interview is your first point of contact with the recruiter. Um, you'll want to have 
well, let me back up. So they'll reach out to you in a couple of ways. They may reach out to you by phone asking you to schedule an interview, or they may reach out to you um, online or through your email and ask you to schedule an interview. So what you'll do is if they send you an email, spend some time to them, set some time, get ready for the interview. For the phone interview, as I said, it's most likely going to be with a recruiter. You'll wanna have your resume in front of you and you'll want to make sure that you are in a good connection where you're going to have good email or good internet and also um, free from any kind of distractions. If you have to take the call from your car, just make sure that you're in a location that you're not driving, number one, because you don't wanna be distracted driving. And number two, you're not gonna be in a location where people are gonna be able to walk by and see you and maybe get distracted from that way. Um, so a video interview. You'll want to have your laptop um, in a quiet area with no distractions. Um, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your connection is strong. You should receive a link for the video interview prior to the day of. I would highly suggest testing that link and making sure that you can actually get into the interview room or however they have that set up. It could be Zoom, it could be Greenhouse, it could be Teams. There's a variety of things out there now. So you wanna make sure that you are able to access the link. Um, you may also want to make sure that you have your recruiter information um, in front of you, just in case that the link is failing, you're running late, you can't get in, um, the manager maybe hasn't shown up yet. You just wanna make sure that you have that kind of contact information um, in case you need to reach out to them. You'll wanna have your resume handy, um, and that way you'll be able to kind of review to your resume when outlining your description. So in-person is an interview that's kind of gotten away um, more recently, but we are kind of getting back that slowly as companies are deciding to go more back in-house than just remote. So when you have an in-house, you're going to have directions to the location. Um, you want to, if you have time or if you can, do a dry run to that location. Um, you want to make sure that you know how long it's going to take you to get there. What does parking look like? If you're downtown in an area, do you have to park in a parking garage? So you, if you do have to do that, you wanna make sure that you give you yourself plenty of time to find parking and to get inside the building. On the day of, you'll wanna make sure that you have the um, candidates information or the hiring manager or recruiter's information in case you are running late or you get stuck in traffic. That way you, they can be aware that you're gonna be coming in a little bit late. You'll want to make sure that you have your resume so that you can again um, refer notes. You'll also wanna bring a hard copy to a resume. I have been in in-person interviews a lot of times where people don't bring a hard copy of their resume. You're gonna want that. Even if the team that's interviewing you already has a resume on hand, they're going to appreciate the thought that you brought something in to kind of hand it to them. Um, you'll also wanna have a notebook so that you can write down notes and you'll have a place where, you're, where you'll have your questions listed and we can get into that more detail. Um, also practice before, your, before any interview, practice with a friend, a colleague, Record yourself, that way you can kind of go back and listen to the answers and see if you need to kind of tweak anything that you want to say. Um, so I have a question, um, has anybody uh, done a video interview? And again, with just emojis, thumbs up if you have, face, you know, smiley face, unhappy face, if you have not. Okay, all right, perfect. So it looks like we have a lot of individuals who have. Um, and again, it's just a little bit of a different interview. It's just on video. So just kind of like this. You also want to make sure that you're dressed professionally um, from anywhere that the camera is going to see. All right. So let's talk about the do's and don'ts of interviewing. Okay. Um, so you're going to want to research the company um, on social media, LinkedIn, online, Glassdoor, Fishbowl, I guess is a new one now. Um, indeed, look at reviews um, for what the company does. Research the company, know what their company culture is like, know what's important to them, know the, the communities they service. Um, it's really important to research all of that to make sure that this company's values and goals are going to align what you want to do. Um, be, prepare questions about the company and their role. Um, again, have your resume readily effective. And again, dress for success. You want to go in, even if you know the company is maybe a little bit more relaxed in their dress code, you're trying to put your best foot forward. So you want to make sure that you're dressed to impress. Um, a lot of times, that doesn't mean like a suit and tie. 
maybe just a button up shirt and a tie. You don't need to wear a jacket if you don't, if you don't want to, depending on the level of the role. But you want to make sure that you're dressed for success. You're going in prepared um, for the interviewer. Also, when you're interviewing, you want to make sure that you are looking at the body language of the interviewer. So interview questions or answers should typically be two minutes. Um, and if it tends to go longer than that, you may see the interviewer kind of rocking in their chair a little bit or kind of looking at their watch or maybe, you know, stop writing their notes. That's a key indicator. That means, you know what, the answer is kind of getting a little bit long winded and maybe we need to find a, a smooth way of closing it out. And so what I mean by that is don't be, um, and so then I realized I was going to have to redo, redo the project and just kind of end it there. Kind of say, well, I, I noticed that the project wasn't doing well and so I needed to find a place to regroup. So kind of find a way to ease into the closing so you're not just kind of stopping um, right at that one point. When you are interviewing, don't assume that um, they're going to be able to go through a lot of information. Recruiters and managers only have about 30 to 60 minutes to um, get through an interview and their goal is to really get to know you. So you want to know about the company, the position, um, and make sure you have questions that you can ask them as well. Try to avoid giving blunt answers. Always give an explanation. Um, let's see, what would be a good example of that? Um, are you willing to um, work overtime? No. Okay. Um, unfortunately, I'm not able to work overtime because I have um, evening class, I have night classes or I have da, da 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 So if there's ever a yes or no answer, try to avoid giving blunt answers. Um, try to give more of a full response to that. So they kind of have a little bit of understanding about why your, your response is one way or another. Um, don't speak negatively about um, a past employer. Uh, so if something's like, well, my, my manager and I didn't get along, maybe it's, or my manager was mean or, or was, a, was um, a time management manager and I'm not, I'm not good with that. Um, say something instead of, you know, um, the culture wasn't the right fit for me or their goals didn't align with my future goals. Um, so you want to turn it around into a way that it's a positive or I have expanded on my growth knowledge. I'm not able to, um, I'm not able to grow anymore from that one experience. So trying to think of it from that way. Um, and then asking managers about compensation, um, try to avoid doing that. If the manager, if the hiring manager brings it up and asks you what you're looking for, then absolutely kind of give them a, an idea of what you're looking for. But if they don't, you wanna save that conversation with you and the recruiter. Now you should have that conversation during the very first phone interview. The phone interview, the recruiter should say, what would be your compensation requirements in order to make a move? And you'll be able to say, oh, full package, I'm looking for $55,000. This will include bonus and this will include any kind of base pay. If as the call is wrapping up and that recruiter has not discussed salary with you, then absolutely say, hey, you know what? I'm super excited about this opportunity. Um, can you let me know what the compensation range is going to be for this role? And then that would start the dialogue of how you could have that conversation. Now, um, let me ask you this. Does anybody get anxious during interviews or nervous during interviews? Um, I do. I mean, I've been doing this career for 24 years, but even when I am on the other side, I still get crazy nervous at times. All right, so I'm going to give you um, just a few tips on how to kind of combat those nerves a little bit. So one thing that I suggest is having a notebook. So I have my handy dandy notebook right here and I know you probably can't see it because my getting hired. Um, so here's my notebook. Um, and what I'll have in here, and I just have some key words and we'll get to interview questions in just a second, but um, I'll, I just have like buzzwords. So they'll know what I need to talk about, like time management, um, effective career change, um, eye contact, start date. So these are buzzwords that I know are gonna help me remember questions that um, are going to be asked. Another thing that I do um, is I'll have a pen or some, like a, um, a stress ball or something, and you can't see my hands, so you know your hands are down here, or even if you're an in-person interview, your hands are typically under the table. I just rub the top of this pen, and, the, and the, the motion kind of calms me a little bit and kind of brings me back down to center. So hold something, a penny, um, 
paper clip, whatever you have that is going to kind of work for you. And you can just keep it out from view and you can just kind of smooth it out and that will help the tension a little bit. Now, what happens when you get to a question that you just can't think of an answer for? What I do is I bring my handy dandy water bottle with me. Now, I don't think I would bring this large one because this is Stanley and this is way too big for interview. It would be kind of a you know, weird conversation topic, but I'll just bring a normal water bottle. And so if someone were to ask me, you know, um, Jolene, tell me about um, the biggest mistake that you made um, in, in your work. So, and I don't have an answer right off the top of my head. I'd be like, wow, you know what? That's a really great question. Let me think about that for a second. Okay. Now it's not gonna give you a lot of time, but it's gonna give you an, oh my gosh, I, I don't know moment. You just kind of take a deep breath and it's gonna allow you 20 to 30 seconds to kind of process yourself and kind of calm your nerves a little bit to kind of think of an answer. And then, okay, this. So those are just some keys and tricks, um, but I highly, highly, highly recommend having a notebook with key words written down They're gonna pro that are going to spark something in your mind where you can kind of go down and write things down. Okay, so let's talk about interviewing. Most companies are going to use a behavioral based interviewing and the most common is STAR. It's situation, setting the scene, giving necessary details of the example, task, describe what your responsibility was in this situation, action, what steps did you take, and then what was the end result. So you're telling a story um, with the STAR method. So you want to make sure that you are being truthful. Um, you want to keep your answers concise and focused. It is so easy to get off on a tangent when you're talking about something. But again, two minutes, because you don't have, you only have 30 to 60 minutes with a recruiter and you, or hiring manager, and you want to make sure that you have time for you to ask your questions, because this is a two-way street, everybody. It's got to be the right fit for the hiring team, but most importantly, it's got to be the right fit for you. And you want to make sure that you ask questions that are going to leave you feeling confident about what the company um, can say and do. You want to give self-awareness answers. We all have faults. We are all really great at some things and we really struggle with some things. So you need to make sure that you're giving self-aware answers. Um, what would you like to know? Um, prepare three to five business related questions. And again, this is where the handy dandy notebook comes in. You'll be able to have your three to five questions written down right here um, on how so that you can answer your questions when it comes to your turn. Um, three is a good number over five can be a little bit more because um, a lot of times interviews are going to be interviews are going to be answered during the interview process, but you want to be able to have questions that you can ask. You don't want to say, oh, no, if you answer them all, I'm, I'm good um, because the interview is going to be like, really? I answered everything that you could possibly think of to ask? Um, so you want to make sure, and we're going to give you some tips on that as well. Um, and then don't forget, this is your, again, two-way street, your opportunity to get to know more about the culture. All right, so before we get into um, interview, example interview questions, um, if you can use the chat box. Oh, Brittany, it's okay, you can go on. Um, what topics do you think are appropriate to discuss in the interview? And Brittany, if you don't mind coming off mute and sharing um, with your um, handy dandy um, results of what everyone's saying. Absolutely. I'm looking for it in the chat. Company culture. Okay. Now remind me again, Jolene, what was the question? Tell me again what the question was. What topics do you think are appropriate to discuss in an interview? So what topics is it okay for a candidate and um, an interviewer to discuss? Oh, I love this next one. Favorite mm -hmm. things about your job. That's an excellent answer. Thank you so much. Absolutely. That's a great one. Keep them coming, y'all. Work-life balance. Mm-hmm. Very Absolutely. important, very important to bring up. Mm -hmm. Goes back to that self-awareness you were talking about. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. ERG group. Oh, love oh, it. Yes, yes. I love that answer. Okay. Well, you can keep trickling them in because we can discuss it as we keep going through if you want to add anything else. But so let's talk about example interview questions. And this is where 
we talked about the interview do's and don'ts and all of that. So we're just going to kind of talk through these a little bit. Um, you know, tell me why you're back on the job market and why are you seeking a new opportunity? There could be a variety of things. Um, you know, if you're, maybe it's one of those things where I've gone as far as I can in this company and I'm looking for new growth opportunities or I, um, I'm looking to make a career change or the culture's not the right fit. And I've been in companies where the culture that I was at wasn't aligned with how I view a company culture should be and where I want to be. And so that is perfectly okay. And they may say, you know, I've had um, someone ask me, you know, Jillian, why wasn't that, you know, when you were at such and such, why wasn't that a great company culture for you? And my response was because I want to work for a company that um, values not only the industry that we're servicing, but values their employees as well. I want to know that this company is going to, to um, enlist in me and, and want me to grow and succeed as well so I can help the company grow and succeed. So, um, or another one was, I really want to work for a company that gives back to the market or gives back to the community. So those are kinds of things that, you know, was a great answer about why a culture isn't the right fit. Or, um, and because we have been in a very unique situation these past three years, a, lo a lot of people that I have interviewed have not been working due to COVID related, related incidents, whether they were taking care of a family member or they had it, or they were laid off because their company did massive layoffs during COVID. Those are all things that are like, hey, let, let's talk about this. This is why I haven't been in the market, but I'm super excited to, you know, to get back employed and get back to where I want to be. And you may be currently working and you may be like, well, you know what? The job's not what I was expecting. I was hoping for a little bit more of a challenge. Um, and so things like that. So tell me about when you made a mistake. Now, this question um, seems to get people at times. And I'm not sure why. Um, I know that um, nobody likes to admit when they make mistakes, but part of making a mistake is growing from that mistake. And that's so important to remember that anytime we make mistakes, we're growing from that and we're able to move forward. Um, one thing that um, I would say is you want to avoid, you want to avoid these two comments. So if someone asks you about if I've made a mistake, um, you want to avoid something like, well, I don't make mistakes, or I've been doing this job for you know, 10 years, I don't ever make mistakes. Or, well, I'm sure I've made a mistake, um, but I can't think of any right now. Or, well, you know, it wasn't really my mistake, it was so-and-so's mistake that I had to kind of clean it up. Again, things that you kind of want to avoid, that's why the notebook is so important. Because like, for example, I wrote start date on here. Um, because one time in my career, um, I sent out an offer letter and it had the wrong start date on it. And I was like, oh, I went to the hiring manager and said, hey, you know what? I'm so sorry. Uh, I know we're starting this person in, in 2021, but with the, you know, the brand new year, I had 2020. So just let you know, I'm going to resend the offer letter to everybody um, with, the new, with the new date. And so, you know, own up to it, fixed it, sent it out, and it was okay. Um, and that's why, again, the book is so important is because it's going to help you remember things that you're not going to, that you're not going to remember in that moment, because interviewing is so stressful. It is. And we, as recruiters, we understand that. And we're not trying to have anybody in a gotcha moment, or we're not trying to make things more challenging for you. A good recruiter will do their very best to put you at ease in the interview process so that you can have a dialogue. Interviewing should be a dialogue. It's a back and forth conversation. When you're with the hiring managers, when you were with a recruiter, it's a back and forth conversation. So it's not going to always be perfect because you are interviewing for a job, um, but it, it shouldn't be anything that's going to be overwhelmingly stressful. So anything that I can do um, to help prepare you for that, to help alleviate that, that's why I want to, want to do. Um, what is your greatest of professional achievement? Um, what, it, what would you consider your biggest challenges or weaknesses? And again, I really don't like challenges and weaknesses. Um, I prefer opportunities. And so if anyone from, and challenges and weaknesses is kind of a little bit of an outdated term. Um, it should be like, what are your opportunities? Um, or where would you like to, where would you like to improve most um, in, your, in your next um, opportunity? And so for me, I'm all, if anyone were to say, hey, you know, Jolene, tell me about your biggest, you know, weakness. I'm like, well, you know what? My biggest opportunity is that time management has gotten away from me because I will get so in the weeds of responding to emails and responding to candidates who have questions that I lose sight, that like I could get lost in my emails for an hour. 
And so maybe I've missed part of another thing that I needed to get done. So for me to avoid that is I put blocks on my calendar that's going to say, okay, you know, you're going to check emails from this time to this time. And then I move on to something else once that time block is done. So talk about what your biggest opportunity is or an area that you want to see improvement in, but also talk about how you've done that or what you've done to kind of get through that um, aspect. And again, avoid um, using passive language when answering yes or no questions. Um, the example is, I see you're about 30 minutes from that office. Um, does this commute work for you? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, you know, yeah, you know, I, in my last role, I commute about four or five minutes each way. So this would be even closer. Or for me, when I was working in an office, it was, you know, I, you know, it's going to be about a 30 minute drive each way. Are you okay with that? Oh yeah. You know, driving home is my decompression time. It's when I listen to my podcast. It's, just, it's when I listen to my music. It's when I decompress my work so that when I get home, I'm home. Um, and then on the way to work, yep, it's great because I can just use that time to kind of process and get mentally ready for the day. That's gonna, I can process on what I need to do throughout the day to kind of make my day run smoother. So those are just things and some tips that are going to kind of help you get to that next spot. Okay, um, so let's, now this is kind of what we talked about earlier. What's okay to discuss in an interview? What can we talk about? So these are examples of questions that you might want to ask. And again, three to five. Um, what does a typical day look like? Uh, what projects are coming up um, in the coming months that are you most excited about? Uh, what are some of the biggest challenges faced in this role? And that is one question that I will ask when I am interviewing for a new role. I'll say, what are the biggest challenges that are facing the team right now? And, and what can I do to maybe help alleviate that challenge? Um, what kind of joint efforts or do you have any joint events with other departments? Um, what is your favorite thing about working here? That is so important to ask. What is your favorite thing about working here? What do you like about working here? And on the flip side, I also ask, what's the one thing that you don't like about working here? Or what has been the biggest struggle that you have faced working here? Because I am a good, bad, and indifferent. Not the, not everything is rainbows and unicorns. Um, I want to know what I'm walking into. I want to know the great, and I want to know, oh, well, you know what? The company can maybe do this, or this team can maybe get focused on this. And that's not going to necessarily um, deter me from wanting to take the role, but I want to know what I'm getting into. I want to know the good, the bad, and the ugly. And a recruiter or a hiring manager should be able to tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, just like kind of like I never make mistakes. Uh, a recruiter or a manager should never say, well, there's nothing wrong with working here. We're great. Um, there's always going to be something. Um, there's whether it's even minute as, well, you know what? We don't have an on-site kitchen, which can be, or an on-site cafeteria, which can be challenging for some people because some people like that, you know, don't want to have to leave and all that. And so, but again, ask what they enjoy and ask what they don't. Um, let's see. And how does the team maintain strong bonds? Critical question, especially when you are, um, if everybody is remote. What do you do to kind of help? Um, what do you do to kind of bridge the gap? What do you do to kind of keep everybody engaged? Um, if you're going for a leadership role and you're going to be managing a um, and you're going to be managing a team of um, remote candidates, they may ask you, "What are you going to do to engage your team? How are you going to engage your team um, in uh, the remote remote setting?" So those are just some kind of questions. And again, three to five. These are just a um, example. This is not the end all be all. You can Google questions you can ask. Um, you can look at their website and see, well, I noticed that your, um, your stock numbers were this amount this time, but they've fallen this time. You know, what was going on in that time that that happened? Or I noticed that you didn't do as much for this or X, Y, and Z. Um, and ask questions like that. It's, uh, ask questions that you want to know because once you leave that interview it's very hard to kind of kind of get those questions answered now one thing we didn't talk about in the interview process i kind of want to bring up um, is panel interviewing so there will be times when you are panel interviewing whether it's a zoom panel interview or whether it's a um whether it's a uh, in-person panel interviewing and i get the question a lot about eye contact so when you're in a panel interview it is 100% okay to focus on the person who's asking the question. 
So recruit uh, hiring manager A asks you a question. So you look at hiring manager A, it's the question. When you give your response, you kind of look at everybody else to make sure that they don't have any kind of follow-up. So don't think that you have to kind of go back and forth like this when you're answering your question. Whoever answers the question, kind of give them that eye contact. And then when that's done, kind of look around to see if anybody has any questions. And if you stop short with something, they will say, hey, can you explain on that a little bit? Or I'd love to hear a little bit more about how you do that. So, all right, let's talk about post-interview. So what are the next steps? Um, they may not, hiring managers um, may not want to give out business cards. And that's okay because you have the recruiter's information. Um, or they may say, absolutely, here's my business card. You know, look, you know, please feel free to call me with any kind of questions you might have. So what you want to do is you want to, after you leave, take some time to think about it. Within 24 hours, um, you want to send out an email um, thanking them for the interview. If you do not have the um, recruiters or if you do not have the hiring manager's information, just send it to the recruiter. And you can say, hey, Jolene, you know, thank you so much for sending this interview. I thought it went really well. Can you send the below thank you note to the hiring team? And then that recruiter will forward that message on to the hiring team. And then um, follow up. Make sure you ask the recruiter or the hiring manager when you leave, you know, what does next steps look like? Um, and they may say, hey, you know what, it's gonna be a couple of weeks since until we're able to get back with you. And if the hiring manager says that, say, okay, great. So then you wait a couple of weeks. If you don't hear anything, um, send an email to the, to the recruiter. And you said, hey, you know, Jolene, um, I had my interview two weeks ago with X company, very excited, um, haven't heard anything. Um, can you please tell me uh, if I'm still in consideration or what next steps are gonna be in the process? And that recruiter should respond to you and say, uh, we're still in interview um, sessions. We've had some unexpected hiccups with travel or time off or, we've had a, a bigger um, response than expected. And so, um, and so then we're going to, it's gonna take us a little bit longer, but you should be, you should hear something within the next, you know, couple of days or so. Um, and then if, if another week goes by, it's okay to, you know, reach back out. I tell my candidates, feel free to reach out to me as much as you need, because again, I've been on that side. I know it's stressful. Um, and so I am perfectly fine if someone wants to reach out to me, you know, once a week or, you know, hey, hey can we, have you heard anything? Um, do you know what next steps are? And then um, we kind of go from there. And that is really it for our interview session. Um, so we do have a virtual career fair for best practices coming up. And so we do have our career fair, um, as Brittany said in the very beginning, uh, next week. And so this is just going to give you a little bit of insight on what to do. So now I will be there. I will be there. Um, I will have a booth. Um, it's going to be called the Hiring Hacks booth. So if you are attending the career fair and you uh, want to say, hey, Jolene, you know, I've redone my resume. Uh, I popped it in my profile. Can you take a look at it really quick before I go into, um, before I go into one of the booths? Or, hey, I, I'm going to, I might get asked this question. I'm not sure how to answer it. Can you kind of help me formulate um, a, a response? Or can you give me some tips on what would be a good idea? So I will be there. I will be there to help. I will be there for the entire time from 12 to 3. Um, it won't be video. It'll be um, virtual chat. But again, I am there to help. So if you need anything, just pop on in over and see me. And we can kind of go from there. So know what you're signing up for. So if you decide to come, we are going to have a lot of companies, a lot of great, fantastic companies who are just love to hire individuals such as yourselves. So know what you're signing up for. Look at all the different companies. See if there's a company that interests you. Please, please, please see. We will have the jobs posted, what they're looking for. Please um, look and see if there's one that's interest, um, one that's going to interest you because I won't have that information. I am there to help guide you through the, through the interview process, but I won't have any idea of, of the jobs necessarily. So if there's one that you're interested in, make sure that you go to that booth. You'll want to visit the career pages. Again, open the job, research the company. So um, uh, like CVS, if, um, if you have a CVS, you know, the CVS should be there, I believe. So if you're interested in CVS, you know, research the CVS company. And um, 
And so they, they may say, hey, you know, why are you, um, why are you uh, interested in our company? Because they say, hey, you know what? I look at CVS. You have um, amazing opportunities for growth based on your cultural page. Um, I've always heard that, you know, looking at Glassdoor and Fishbowl and Indeed, I've heard nothing but great reviews. That's why I want to work here. Um, prepare an elevator pitch about yourself. And then, of course, um, we're going to have uh, my booth and then getting hired will have their solid booth to kind of help guide you in the right, right direction. Now, one more thing about the interviewing, all that, and this is just going to go back to the elevator pitch. The recruiter or the hiring manager may say, is there anything else that you want us to know about you? And that's your 30 seconds, your 30 seconds to say, yes, I think that I will be a great fit for this role because I've done X, Y, and Z. And again, handy dandy notebook, you can have like your anything that you want to um anything that you want to say that's going to really highlight, highlight your qualifications because you want to walk out of that room confident that you've given them the that you are the person they want to hire for the role um and that's really all that i have everybody um thank you so much for joining um, us today i hope that you were um able to really get a lot out of our presentation um Brittany, did you want to talk about the career fair at all or ali any Closing remarks that we want to share before we turn it over to questions. I just want to say we look forward to having each and every one of you on our Getting Hired Virtual Career Fair next week, Wednesday, April the 12th. Make sure that you're connecting with that QR code and connecting with us as an organization. We are absolutely here to support you. Thank you so much for being here. I did see some questions that came up in the chat that I think we can address now. Mm -hmm. um, and like Brittany said, if you are interested in attending the career fair, you haven't already registered, you can scan that QR code. Um, the QR code that's actually on the screen right now is to join the Getting Hired Talent Community. So you'll want to join the Getting Hired Talent Community to hear about all the different events that we have throughout the year. We also have a lot of blogs on there to learn more about different things that are happening in your communities. Um, and again, we have over 150,000 open job positions there. So you will want to check them out using our job board. And I have the questions queued up for you. Perfect. So I'll get started now. We had a question of, is using the LinkedIn generated resume valid? What do you mean, what do you mean by valid? I mean, yes, you can use the LinkedIn um, generated resume. The only concern that might come with that is if it doesn't have contact information um they might but if it has contact information has everything in there absolutely it's perfectly acceptable just like an indeed generated resume um those are perfectly acceptable to use all right we got a question of what will receive a copy of this presentation so yes if you registered for this event and you weren't able to make it or if you did attend today, we're going to send out a copy of this presentation for you to go back and review. Awesome. Do you also provide job openings in Canada? That I don't know. I feel like we may. Um, we may have a few different jobs in Canada. However, our primary focus is in the United States. Um, there may be some that are on our job board, um, but for the most part, we are. All of our jobs are located in the United States. Okay, next question. Is it ever okay to ask why this position has been open for a while or why there is a high turnover rate at a company or could you word it in a way that brings up job security? Yes. Um, a lot of times what the question that I get is, can you tell me why this job has been open? And my response will be, well, you know, the, um, either it's a brand new position or, um, or uh, we just, um, the person who left the role because of the position. I do get, I see this open role for a long time, but one thing though too to keep in mind of is depending on the role. So if you're applying for a customer service role, um, there's a chance that there's going to always be more than one. If you're like a call center, there's always going to be a number of roles that are open in that aspect of it. But you can say, you know, I've noticed this, this role has been open quite a bit, or this role has been open um, often, or can you, is, is there a high turnover rate? And it's so can you tell me what some of the challenges are for the role? Because why one person leads a role may excite another person. So I would definitely ask in a way, 
Um, what, is, what are some of the challenges that people face in this role? And that should tell you why um, it can be turned over a lot because if you're in a call center um, and all you're doing is taking 150 calls a day or and if you get 150 calls a day, you know, you can have like a quota issue or if you're in collections, um, you're going to have a lot of complaints. You're going to get a lot of people kind of hanging up on you or, or yelling at you. And so that's going to cause a lot of turnover as well. But in short, yes, I would definitely ask, um, why is this role open? And what are some of the challenges that are faced in this role? And that should give you an idea about why turnover is going to happen. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jolene. Um, I hear you multiple times. Uh, like it's it's giving a bit of Darth Vader. So just mute yourself and unmute yourself for the next question. Maybe that might work. We're just going to do a quick little reset. All right. So the next question is, I feel like I do best, or maybe this is a comment. I feel like I do best when I go to career fairs, virtual fairs, because I'm more personable. Besides the getting hired fairs where I can find more online or local career fairs, all the ones that I seem to find are empty or non-existent. So there is a question. Besides the getting hired fairs, are there any places locally or online that have career fairs because the ones that this person has attended have been fairly empty or non-existent? Um, there are, do I sound, do I still sound like Darth Vader? And we're just going to roll with it. It's going to so be I still your sound thing. Like, I, still, I still sound like Luke, I'm your father. I still sound like yes. Darth Vader. Yes, that's absolutely how you sound, but it's cool. It's really cool. All right, so I'm going to try to do this as in, not talk as much as I normally do. Yes, you can read, like I'm, I went to Google and I searched virtual career fairs and there is a plethora of places where you can look into career fairs. Another place is Handshake. If you are in the college realm and you're looking for positions, Handshake is another great place to find virtual career fairs. And I'm already talking more than I wanted to, but yes, yes, you can look up virtual career fairs or virtual job fair, and that should give you the least. And I would just add, you can also look, um, find a lot of virtual career fairs on LinkedIn, which we mentioned earlier. We always post our job fairs on LinkedIn, so there's must be other ones there as well. And the same thing with Facebook. So you can also find different career fairs going on on Facebook. Um, and on LinkedIn, when you're looking for different job fairs, you can also do so by joining different groups. Um, a lot There's a lot of groups for people who are searching for jobs or people who are maybe working in specific industries. So I would definitely recommend joining different LinkedIn groups. And then you'll see um, different organizations post whatever hiring events that they're having, that they're having. Um, whether it's virtual career fairs or even just like open positions. Okay. And Alan, that's a great suggestion. I just Googled virtual job fairs on LinkedIn and there are a plethora of them. So Awesome. The next question is how far back to list work experience? I've worked for over 30 years. That is awesome that you've worked for that amount of time. That means you have a ton of experience. Jolene, what do you think about the ways in which we can make sure that we're highlighting this awesome achievement. Okay, I'm sorry, my, it, my sound, when I, could, I didn't hear that. Can you repeat that? I'm having, I'm having computer issues. No worries, I, I can actually answer that question. Okay. Um, how far back to list work experience? I've worked for over 30 years. So what I would suggest as far as that is concerned is um, most times they say to, to focus on jobs that are within the last 10 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing is relevant experience. And so I have been one of those individuals that have a, a couple of different areas that I've worked in. And so if you had a role in the past that really aligns with this particular role that you're applying for and that will, will show that you have the skills um, that that they're looking for, I would go ahead and add it um, as well. So there's two approaches. You can either do just the last 10 years or you can do your resume based on the specific industry or the specific skills that align with that particular role. Um, yeah. So hopefully, oh, go ahead, Julie. No, and also if you, you can also list it in a summary qualifications or highlights of qualifications at the top of your resume instead of because we don't need to do objectives anymore objectives are kind of out the window but if you want if you have a resume you can put summary like my summary says talent acquisition manager 25 years of experience and goes kind of all that so it's kind of like that thick like, 
Um, so you can always put that. If you only want to do 10 years in your summary, um, you can put history, you know, 25 years or 10 years experience as a da 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 da. And so that goes to a couple of different ways you can do that. And I'm always happy to help. So if you need me to take a look at it, I'm happy to do that too. Okay, we got another question. Is there a benefit to having LinkedIn Premium? It, 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 it's 100% personal. I do not. I do not do LinkedIn Premium. Um, I, I didn't see a whole lot of value for me. For me. Um, now, LinkedIn Premium does offer a little bit more, does have training classes and things like that. Um, LinkedIn Premium also will show how you compare. If you're applying for a job that has like 20 or 30 other people, it will show you how you compare um, to, to the other individuals who have applied. Uh, but for me, I, I didn't find value in it because I can find training courses um, at other places for free um, if I needed to go in for any. But again, it's 100% a personal preference. I know a lot of people who have used it and have been very happy with it, um, but it's just not something that I use. Someone is giving you your flowers, Jolene. Thank Aww. you, Jolene, for your response. I really appreciate it. Exclamation mark. I was a student loan counselor for a nonprofit and what you said makes a lot of sense as it was a collections type of job. All mm -hmm. right, we got, give me one moment. Let me make sure that I'm not missing anything. Um, for the past seven months, I've been unemployed due to an unexpected uh, unexpected family death, a health issue, and subsequent surgery. How to respond, I'm assuming, to this specific gap in employment during an interview? How do you speak um, about that? What, what we talked about at like our last um, hiring event and what we kind of give counsel to on that is if you have that kind of gap, um, I would just put, put the gap on the resume, whatever what it was, and I would just say, Family, family needs, or taking, you know, personal, taking care of family, um, and you can just get into it a little bit more. I don't know that you need to get into specifics, but you can just say, um, unfortunately, I've had some some family, you know, health things that I had to take care of, and just kind of, you know, go from there. I and mean, you don't need to get into the specifics of any kind of personal service you've had. Um, and in one of those lines, it was, um, I was taking care of family members, and then that's really kind of all you need to say. Okay, uh, next question. Do you have any suggestions for international students or those who need sponsorship after OPT? Um, no, no, you'll have to just try to, um, you would have to um, be able to go with a company that can, um, that can sponsor. And so that's really kind of what you do is you would want to ask, or they, do you, you know, are you able to sponsor? Um, international students or international um, employment because that's going to be the only, only way. I, I really don't have any kind of insight to that other than um, just when you're looking for companies. Now, they may say must be authorized to work in the United States. So they may say this. And so um, then you would know ahead of time that company does not do any kind of sponsorship. I hope that helps. That's just not one that I've dealt a lot with. Um, so I hope that helps in that question. And if I can also offer this as a suggestion, start looking for jobs before you actually graduate, because I know that there's a certain amount of time that you have to be employed before there may be issues with you being able to stay. And so just being proactive about your job search. And you already are doing that since you're here. So awesome sauce. Next question, changing keywords for resume and cover letters for each job. Is there specific keywords that you should be using from the job description? Um, I would say keywords are, are relevant to what um, your experience is. You don't ever want to falsify, embellish, or anything like that on your resume because that will kind of end up catching up with you in the end when you're trying to talk about the experience. But I would definitely take your take the job description and take your resume and you know make sure that you're highlighting whatever they're asking for at the top. Again, perfect for a summary or highlighted skills where you can. Um, highlight all those key terms that they're going to be looking for in the job description. Last question. What is the best way to network better? I reach out to dozens of people for one company and the most I'll get back is someone looking at my profile, but they rarely ever respond back. 
well, that's disappointing. Um, so I really don't know how to better include that except for maybe just, I guess, why one company? Um, is it only that one company that you're interested in or that's an example where you'll reach out to? Um, um, okay, just an example. Um, so what I would do is I would reach out to, and maybe it depends on the size of the company. If you're reaching out to dozens of people, they may think it's um, that you're not serious and kind of looking for things. I would just kind of reach out to people whose background aligns what you have. You're welcome. Um, and just um, look at, um, look at, uh, I'm trying to think how I want to, like for me, I do a lot of like when I'm, you know, recruiting, I do a lot, I'll reach out to a lot of recruiters or benefits or anybody who's in that line of business, um, product managers, uh, things along those lines. So reach out to people who are, um, who are aligned with your similar background or backgrounds that you're similar in. I wouldn't reach out to dozens of people at one company. Um, I would just reach out to individuals who you feel more closely aligned with and kind of see how those responses go. Um, and a lot of times, sometimes people just don't want to connect with people they don't, they don't, um, they don't know. As a recruiter, I'm an open network, so I will almost always um, accept anybody who wants to join my network because I am a recruiter and I always want to have those connections. There are very few times um, that I won't do it, and that's the reasons that I'm not going to get into, but um, for the most part, I will almost always. Um, connect with somebody. And I, I'll just add to that. You can always look for opportunities to meet with companies in different settings. For example, we do different um, panel events, such as like the In Action series, um, where we're trying to create spaces for candidates to network with people working within these different companies. So if you're not getting a response by messaging people on LinkedIn, or maybe you're emailing them, um, I would just suggest trying to find a different way to get in front of them. And maybe that's going to a virtual career fair that they're going to be at, or like I mentioned, going to a panel or some sort of other maybe virtual event um, and then making a connection that way. And also a picture and a professional picture. Um, people are, are more hesitant to connect with someone who doesn't have a picture and who doesn't have a professional picture. So um, I know a lot of people have pictures with their families and their dogs and and out on the beach and all that, people are more responsive if um, if, it, if there is a picture and it's more of a professional picture. Awesome. So uh, follow-up question from the same person. So if I reach out to people in my field, how should I ask, how do I get this job without seeming pushy? Um, I would reach out to the recruiter of that company and just say, I wouldn't reach out to a bunch of the managers and all that because you would have no idea who's really hiring into that role. So if you have a way to connect with the recruiter, um, I've done that before early in my career. Um, you know, I've reached out to a recruiter and hey, you know what, I'm super excited about this role. Um, is there any opportunity to have a quick five minute conversation so I can learn more and I can share more about my background? Um, and they, they may respond and they may not. And if they don't respond, then I'm like, okay, well, maybe that's not the right company that I want to be in if they can't take a couple of minutes to, to respond. Um, but I would not respond to just a manager or anybody because that, per depending on the company size, you may, have no, you may not have any idea who the hiring manager is. Um, so I would focus on the talent acquisition side of the company and then say, hey, you know what? I've applied to this role. I'm super excited about and you, you want, want to make a connection with that. So let's, let's say that you want to go to CBS, okay? And you reach out to a recruiter on CBS. Say, you know, hi, my name is Jolene. I saw that you have a, you know, talent acquisition manager role open. I am so excited about the opportunity to work at CBS because I see all the community, blah, 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 all the community partnerships you've done. Um, or, you know, so you want to make a connection. This is why you want to work at that company. Not, you know, what can I do to get the job? But this is why I want to work. Um, this is what I, why I want to work there because I've seen all the great things that you do. And that's more likely to get your response when you can give an example about why you want to work there. So again, it's just doing a little bit of research, research and then just trying to make the right goals. Awesome. So we actually, I got two, two things, two uh, comments that I actually want to um, specifically direct my attention to really quick. 
Mm -hmm. um, Heather, I love your comment and I would love to know if you would be willing to allow us to use this um, later on for, for marketing that we do uh, because we do these events all the time and it's not very often that we get people that say, um, you know, come back and say, thank you so much that you just did. And so if you're okay with us using it, we would love to use this as a, a comment that we're able to share with others to let them know how beneficial this is. And for those of you that can't see her comment, I'll read it to you. Thank you for this great information. Appreciate your time. I have more confidence in my job search, refreshing my resume and joining LinkedIn this afternoon. I wow. appreciate you so much providing us with that feedback. That means the world to us. And so hopefully we'll be able to share that with someone else. And I heard someone saying something, Jolene, forgive me I if I cut you off. Isn't that amazing? Awesome. Okay, next thing I want to, to um, answer this because Motorola is actually my client. And so um, I am not sure exactly how to provide you with my email address. I'll just say it slowly so that you can um, write my email address Brittany, drop down. It in the chat. It's saying that it only is gonna go to the hosts and panelists. I'll do it for you. Okay, awesome. So um please shoot me an email with your resume and i'll forward it over to the point of contact that we have over at motorola okay awesome thank you so much Heather. and thank you so much for letting us know um uh, about your experience with one of the companies we absolutely want to do what we can and i can't tell you for certain that you know we're going to have any movement per se but this is how you network you use the people that you're in connection with that may have a connection with the company that you're interested in and hopefully that'll move the needle forward in your job search and so it happens just like that i was i'm grateful to have the opportunity to be able to support you in any way that i can with that, I'm going to turn it back over to the amazing, the incomparable, the awesome Allie Merkent to close us out. Before, before, before we close out, I just want to make one more comment, okay? Awesome. Um, uh, in, in regard, regard to resumes, one thing that I was thinking, thinking about and through the presentation that, I didn't, that we didn't put on there that I think we need to add and the importance of it is, if you have a two-page resume, please make sure that the experience ends on page one. So you don't want to have a company experience with, um, like, let's say, again, I hate to keep using CDS, but it's the one that just keeps popping in my head right now. If you look at CDS and you've got, um, I don't know, like six or seven bullet points, and on page one, it's going to have the four bullet points, and on page two, it's going to have the three. You don't want that. You don't want a, an inconsistent page break. The page break needs to be smooth. So, so then you, you might, might want to think about only having like three, so you want to keep your top one there and then your smooth page break with more, page two would start with your second company or the next company there. So you don't want experience on, on page one and then experience that company on page two. You want to make sure it's a smooth page break. The other thing is if you have the opportunity to save it in a PDF file, you want to make sure that you do. And the reason why is if you are IT focused or anything focused with any kind of weird spelling, um, if it's in Word document, the red squigglies will show up. So it may look like something to spell check when that might actually be um, an IT term, or maybe it's a street address you live on, or maybe it's some other kind of code that comes with your current job. If you're in PDF, it will, it will take away all the squiggly lines, all the different um, nuances that maybe get picked up if you show it uh, under, um, under work. So that's, that's it for me. I'm sorry I keep going. going. I know we need to close out with it, but you know, just wanted to put the last in there because I um, forgot to have it on the slides. That's it. Thank you, everybody. No problem, Jolene. Thank you so much for that last minute tips. Um, BK, do you want to move the slide back to? And I think we could just close out by, you know, reminding everybody one more um, about the virtual career fair that we have next week. We will also have a booth with getting hired representatives in it called the Hiring Hacks booth. Jolene will be there. I most likely will be there as well. And if you have any other questions about anything that we talked about today or um, anything that comes up during the career fair, we're here to help. So feel free to drop into that booth and talk to us there.
Um, and as a reminder, you will get this recording sent out to you after the event with the links to register in case you haven't already done so. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you so much for stopping by. Bye, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.